What is going on, Internet? This is JD coming at you another video from Redskins Rant. Hail to the Redskins. Um, I'm just getting on here to kind of talk about. I'm probably going to release a video tomorrow as well. I want to talk a little bit about um, what I'm hearing when it comes to what we should do in the draft. I've been hearing a lot of. What's the word? I, I don't want to say dumb because they, I'm sure they have their reasons. Um, just I, there's a lot of. I don't think it's smart. Um, and, and people really don't like look at our team the right way when it comes to who they predict we're going to draft and who, what we need. Um, for, for example, I keep seeing drafts where we get an edge rusher first round. I don't see the point in that. If you look at the Washington Redskins, okay, this is why Jay Gruden hasn't been fired. So just look at the Washington Redskins from, from the front office standpoint, okay? If you look at the Washington Redskins from a front office standpoint, the Washington Redskins last year went seven and nine. Okay, we had a quarterback with a broken leg. The entire offensive line was injured. None of our offensive weapons, like our receiving weapons and our running back we drafted, were healthy. So, a lot of things didn't go our way, and the Washington Redskins were still seven and nine. Okay, two years ago. When we had, or yeah, three years ago, when we had Kirk Cousins and we had everything go his way, we were eight, seven, and one. So they're looking at the team saying the team has gotten better. And even though with all them injuries, we still ended up being seven and seven and nine. Okay? And, and in case you're not sure what I'm talking about, a couple years ago, Kirk Cousins had an, an offensive line that was top 10 in uh, pass, uh, pass blocking and rushing. And if you don't believe me on the rushing part, we averaged over 100 yards a game. Okay, we had a, it was, I think it was, I want to say 1,800 yards rushing was the amount of rushing yards we had that year. Um, Kirk Cousins had almost 5,000 passing yards. He had two 1,000 yard receivers. Jordan Reed was healthy most of the season. Um, and we had all that go our way. Um, defense. Did ha wasn't horrible. They gave up the same amount of points that they did this year before. They also gave up the same amount of um. That's cool. Um, the they uh the defense also gave up the same amount of yards per game. Actually, less yards per game. It's only three less yards, but still less. The only difference that happened was third down conversions were up for the opposition. Now everyone and their mother always says and always complains that. The defense, because of third down conversions, is the reason why we lost. Well, that's false. If if we gave up more third down conversions as a team, and we gave up more yards and, and points, you would have a point. There's a correlation, okay? But correlation doesn't mean causality, okay? The, the defense was the same defense we had one, from one year to the other. They just gave up more third down conversions. But the offense had everything go its way. And we didn't have more points per game. We had less points per game. We had less red zone touchdowns. Quarterback had less uh, touchdowns. Um, so on and so forth. We had a lot more field goals that year. The only thing that kind of kept our offense afloat is the fact that we had eight more rushing touchdowns. So if you're looking at it from, from um, the front office perspective, okay, the Washington Redskins last year had everything not go their way when it comes to injuries. Um, literally the entire offense was injured. Let's just, let's just be honest. We had a third-string offensive line, a fourth-string quarterback. We were using second- and third-string receivers. And we just – we ended up just not being able to put a – we put a competitive team on the field because Jay Gruden's actually a pretty good coach. And I think he's actually one of the better coaches in the league because he's doing so much with so little. But what we need to do – we don't need offensive line. Okay, the offensive line was, was a top 10 offensive line last year until we got injured. Are there some guys in the offensive line that I personally don't like? Absolutely. I do not like in any way, shape, or form Morgan Moses. Uh, Sean Laval was adequate. Morgan Moses was adequate, but I don't like him because he's always holding. He holds on almost every I think – I don't know if a statistic went through the end of the season because I got hurt, but at one point in the season, he led the league in penalties for holds. So I don't like Morgan Moses one bit. And especially last year, how crucial it was to us. We had the point. We were at the point when it comes to the Washington Redskins where we, excuse me, we, we didn't have like the greatest offense. And, and 
And I'm not going to sit here and everyone thinks that, oh, we just had a bad quarterback and Alex Smith was horrible. Alex Smith was thrown into an offensive style he, he's not used to. Okay? That's the first thing. Second, he didn't have the, the running back he was supposed to have, which is Darius Geis. We drafted him to give a solid running game. Adrian Peterson stepped in and did, did, did adequate. Um, I mean, he didn't do the greatest, but he did okay. All right. And when our offensive line went down and was no longer healthy, his production went down and was no longer, he was no longer like being adequate at that point. He was just filling a spot. Okay. So there's a correlation to that too. Adrian Peterson, I'm glad he's on the team. I'm glad he's a backup, but I think he's going to be a, a locker room issue because he's not going to get the carries he wants. He thinks he's going to get 1500 yards this year. You're not getting that unless Darius Geis is injured. And unless our offensive line stays healthy all year and we, our quarterback, whoever it's going to be, and I'll go over that here in a minute, whoever our quarterback is, unless we have some kind of offense where we're just bombing it deep and, and teams got to play back, we're not, we're, the running game's not going to be as effective. So, excuse me. So offensive line, I don't think we need to be drafting an offensive line. Um, not at least in the first three rounds. Maybe the last pick of the third round we have, sure, we can draft an offensive lineman. But I think we have other pressing needs we need to address. We signed uh, Eric Flowers. I didn't hate that signing because the biggest thing we need in our offensive line is depth because of how often we get injured. We still have Jerron Christensen, um, who we drafted last year, who uh, he got some playing time, but he, he's going to be better than he was last year after working with Bill Callahan. You understand, Bill Callahan is the best offensive line coach in the league, and he has been for the last at least decade, maybe two decades. So as long as we have Bill Callahan, he'll make whatever offensive line we put out there competitive. That's why even last year when all of our offensive line was out, we were able to still get almost 180 yards rushing or 150 yards rushing against the the Eagles when everyone on the offensive line was like third stringers because he's an adequate – or not adequate. He's the best offensive line coach. Now, he also – um, apparently pushes people too hard, and that's why I think the offensive line is getting injured. Apparently, they're reining that back a little bit this year, so that'll really help the help the Washington Redskins. If our offensive line can stay healthy, we can keep an entire offensive line for an entire season the same. I mean, obviously, you're gonna have one guy with bumps and bruises. You have sub ins once in a while. That's fine. But if if we can keep, um, for the most part, uh, the same offensive line the entire season, we're gonna actually be uh, successful. And that's one of their biggest issues we've had the last two years. And we still have put out decent offensive numbers. And, we, and I mean, I haven't even got to the, the, the real issue we have to address yet. So I don't think we need to be drafting offensive line with our first three picks. We have a first, a second, and two-thirds this year. So I don't think we need to be doing that. Um, the second need that they keep, the one I see the most is... Um, the on, ooh, okay. Um, is, uh, what, what is it, edge rusher. We don't need another edge rusher. We have Ryan Kerrigan, Matt Ioannidis. We have uh, Payne and Settle up the middle. We have Jonathan Allen. We have Ryan Anderson. We have uh, Blantley or Brantley, some, Caleb Brantley, I think is his name, or Blantley. And uh, apparently Jay Gruden's like really excited about having him on the team. He thinks he's going to actually help us in, in, in a couple ways. So I don't think we need edge rusher, at least not early. I mean, obviously you want to get depth at that position. But if you look across the board, our, our defensive line's pretty good. I think Matt Ioannidis is pretty good. He's due for a, a new contract. He's, it's coming up. We, we better sign him. He's a good player. Unless we're, we're also going after like Jadavian Clowney or something. Um, obviously, Kerrigan's getting older, but Kerrigan still is very productive. And he doesn't miss games, so you can always rely on him to play. Jonathan Allen is a stud. John Payne's a stud. Tim Settle. I mean, I've, I've contemplated, like, what would the Redskins do if they switched to a 4-3? Now, obviously, you don't want to do that because of how much people pass nowadays. But our run defense would be unstoppable if we switched to a 4-3 and you played Tim Settle and Payne up the middle. You can't move those guys. You just can't move them. Then you have Ioannidis and Jonathan Allen on the edge. And then you have your outside linebackers. You have uh, Ryan Anderson. Your middle linebackers, Ruben Foster. Or Sean Deon Hamilton. It just depends on how healthy or whether Reuben Foster is going to be uh, suspended. And then you have Ryan Kerrigan. The problem is it does leave you a little bit vulnerable in the back end. If we had an elite secondary, I could say that that would be we could do both and have an elite 
run stopping defense and then a, a good pass defense, but I don't think our secondary is elite. We have some elite players, um, but just not. Um, our, our, I just don't think we need to really be spending high draft picks on defensive linemen right now. I think we need to make the ones we have better. Um, we've already invested high picks in that position, and we don't need to be spending another another year getting getting more um, high picks in those positions. Don't get me wrong; they I think they, they those have played out very well. Jonathan Allen, Ryan, Jonathan Allen, Ryan Anderson, um, Jonathan Allen, Ryan Anderson. Uh, I don't think Matt Eye Knights was a high draft pick, um, but uh, Drawn Payne, um, Tim Settle was a late round pick, but all those guys that we've drafted early have paid off. I don't think they've, they're busts at all. I think they've been fantastic. Uh, maybe Ryan Anderson, because he just, I don't think he's been on the field enough to really figure out whether he is or is not the guy we thought we drafted. So, um, that being said, uh, next uh, next position that they keep saying we need to draft which this one you can make a legitimate argument for. They keep saying we need to draft another safety, um, or we need to draft an elite corner to go opposite of Jordan, or uh, Josh Norman. You, you can make the argument, I guess, for if, if okay, okay. So here's here's an example. If you draft an elite safety, let's say you draft the best safety in the draft, you're going to have a young Landon Collins and a young rookie safety back there. We're basically you're looking at the next like Earl Thomas and, and uh, Cam Chancellor okay just two really good safeties defending the back end of the defense you can make that argument but I, I argue we are already we already have two guys that or a handful of guys back there that we've already drafted to play the position I mean Troy Abke I don't know how I, I haven't seen enough tape on him to know with the Redskins if he's improved or not I guess we'll find out this this year but Troy Abke had elite speed and if, if, he, if his work ethic is as good as it was at Penn State, I'm sure he's worked on the things he needs to do to get on the field. So he drafted someone in Troy Apke that could do the job. And I'm sure playing along Landry, he's going to, you know, it's going to rub off Landry's ability. You also have, I think it's uh, Nicholson. I can never get these, I always get these two mixed up, which one's the safety. Is it Nicholson or Fabian Monroe? Whichever one it is, they're not horrible. Uh, I think I think it's Nicholson. I, I think I'm going to stick with Nicholson on that. Um, I, I can't look it up. I'm driving, obviously. But Nicholson was a player last year that played, and he I think he was our starting safety until we got Ha Ha Clinton Dix, and Ha Ha Clinton Dix just got awful. Um, and I still stand by that that's the turning point in our season. Our defense went from good to shit whenever we got him. And it's not because Ha Ha Clinton Dix, I, I mean, I don't think he played very well for us. Don't get me wrong. But the scheme we had fit the, fit the personnel. And he could just never adapt to our scheme, and he just—I don't think he picked up on it enough. And uh, and we just couldn't get back to the, the the defensive form that we that we had. So, um, so back to um, corner, you can make the argument because if we have Norman, and he's—I personally think we should trade Norman for picks, and we have young guys play them. Like let's say well, hypothetically, let's say this: let's say we trade Norman, we get a second round pick. And we can draft maybe not the top tier echelon safety, but we or free safety, but we can get one that's pretty good that can become an elite safety. And we have our young guys. We have uh, you know uh, Fabian Monroe. We have um, guys or uh, Quentin Dunbar. Obviously, we can use a draft pick and get another corner. Um, I'm trying to think of all the corners. We have a lot of corners. Uh, Stroman. Uh, Housley, so we have a lot of young guys that honestly need the experience to get better, and the, in we, well, we also have DRC, which I don't I don't like signing DRC at all. Dominic Rogers Camardi, I, I I personally think the reason why we signed him was I don't think Josh Norman is about you know mentoring the younger players. I don't think he's about that. I just I, personal opinion. I don't, I'm not trying to like not it's not like a thumping I've heard. It's just, I have that. I just have that feeling that he's not about, you know, making sure the younger guys get acclimated and they improve. So I don't think that's something that he's all about. And he's he's like, you know, hell bent on making all the younger guys better. I think he looks out for himself, which is fine. Um, but I think that's why they brought in. I don't think Dominique Rogers Camardi will be on the on the final roster by the end of training camp. Just personally, don't. He might be, and I may be. Way, way wrong on that 
but he's been out for a year, and there's a reason why no one signed him last year. Um, like last year, we traded, we got Alander Skandrick, and basically, I think all we did was bring him in. What's Dallas' schemes? What do you know about Dallas? Got all the information we could. Had him train someone to be better than him, and then we cut him. That's basically what happened with Alander Skandrick. So. Um, so you can make an argument about our secondary and improving the secondary. I personally think we need to take the draft picks we've already invested in and see what they what they are. I mean, what I think the, the defense we had last year. Now, obviously, we're not we don't have Swearinger right now. If we had Swearinger and Landon Collins in the in the defensive backfield, man, that's crazy. But I think Swearinger was a locker room cancer. That's why we got rid of him. I mean, it makes no sense to get rid of him other than the fact that he's a locker room cancer, undermine the coach, question the coach, go in the media, question the coach. You don't do that shit. And, I, and I'm and i banking on the fact, and I've heard this from a couple insiders that have said this on like podcasts and things, that, that that's not the first time they've had to talk to him about the things he said and the things he said in the locker room, things he says to younger players. And you can't have that kind of attitude um, festering amongst your players. There's a lot of young players on our defense on our team in general, there's a lot of young players on our team. You can't have a, a, a I don't say he's a veteran, but he's been around the league a couple of years. But you can't have a, I w- I'll call him a veteran, a veteran player going around saying those kind of things and just bringing down the team around him. You just can't have that. And I'm pretty, I, I'm 99% confident that he's done it before. They sat him down and they told him to stop or told him to tone it back or whatever. And the, when he called out the defensive, the, the coach, that was just the last straw. That's that's my personal opinion on that. I, I'm not 100% confident in that opinion, That I'm, in my opinion. It may be wrong. I may be dead wrong on that. I mean, he might have not done it once, and it was just a rash decision. If it was a rash decision, never done it once, then I think that was a stupid decision, but I have a feeling it wasn't the first time. He runs his mouth a lot. Um, but onward and upward. What I think the Redskins need to do. Okay, um, and I'm gonna state this. I, I have said in, in in many videos. I think we need to get rid of Jordan Reed. I'm pretty sure there's a team out there that would love to have Jordan Reed. They take the risk on him, give up a third round, maybe even a second round, to have Jordan Reed on their team because they're trying to win a championship now. A prime example is the New England Patriots just had Gronk retire, and they could use a good a good tight end. Um, Jordan Reed, if he's healthy, he's a good tight end. I'm not den- denying that. He just, and, and I also am not saying that Jordan Reed's like not a good locker room guy. He's a good character person. It's not a personal attack on him as a as a as a as a guy. It's it's Jordan Reed, the football player. His abilities are great, but his the most important ability that we can value right now as Redskins is availability, especially the way our team has been injured the last few years. And he has been injury prone since we got him. It's not like he just started getting injury prone because he's working out with the offensive line or whatever. It's not, he's not part of that part of the injury problem. He's just always had injury problems since we drafted him. He's ne- I don't think he's never played a full season. Um, it's just, it's not a, it's not a personal attack on him. He's a good character guy. He's never gotten in trouble with the law. I've never heard of any issue where he's like a locker room issue. Uh, he, he, he's, a, he's a team guy. He just can't stay healthy. And, what I, and I don't think it's because he's not prepared. I've never seen a decline in his production, like his abilities. If, if, if there is a decline, I've not seen it. It's always just been he's just not healthy. That's really what it comes down to when it comes to Jordan Reed. So that being said, I personally think the Washington Redskins should trade Jordan Reed. We can do it this year or we can get a pick for next year. It really just depends on the team and how desperate they are. There's some competitive teams out there that could really use Jordan Reed. And if he could stay healthy, he would give them a Super Bowl champ- chance. New England Patriots are the one that sticks out to me. Um, I'm sure there's others out there. Um, just really depends on the situation and what teams feel they have. Like, for example, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I don't even know who the tight end is for the Rams. The Rams would be another example of a team that would benefit from having Jordan Reed because I, I just don't remember who the tight end is. It may be someone... And I'm just drawing a blank on it, but I don't remember who their tight end is. So the Washington Redskins could trade him. We might, I mean, he has value, so we might get a good pick, which we can use to build our team this year. Here's what the Redskins 
should need to draft. And I've actually seen a bunch of mock drafts with this, so I feel like I'm on target with, with what a lot of people are thinking. And this is ESPN, this is, um, I don't, not, not not so much Mel Kiper Jr. If there's NFL Network guys that have done this, there's other YouTube channels that I've seen do this on who they should draft. I believe the Redskins should go receiver and they need to get a tight end to replace Jordan Reed. They need to go hard into getting a receiver and tight end. All the, all the mock draft, well, not all, but a bunch of them I've seen have um, uh, the Washington Redskins drafting DK Metcalf. Now, take this with a grain of salt. It's not me saying that because it's in Madden. It's true. But I've done the scenario that I think the Redskins should play out in in Madden. I think they, I traded, uh, I traded for Josh Rosen. Now, to be fair, I traded away Alex Smith for Josh Rosen because whenever I restarted it, he wasn't injured. And But to be fair, I didn't spend 20-some million dollars just to be fair to the scenario the Redskins have. So we wouldn't be able to spend $20 million this year because that's what we owe Alex Smith. Okay, So I played out that scenario. I didn't spend $20 million. <clears throat> so we got Alex, I got Josh Rosen. And then in this draft, I trade away Jordan Reed. I actually trade away Josh or Josh Norman. Um, I didn't trade away Trent Williams. I, did, I traded away Vernon Davis. <clears throat> so I trade away a bunch of these players and got more draft picks. And with these draft picks, I was able to, um, first off, I traded up to number 10. And I didn't use any draft picks from this year. I used my first rounder next year. Okay? So I used a first rounder next year and like a sixth, sixth round pick. Um, and like, I think I gave him like a third rounder as well from next year, traded up and I got, um, DJ Metcalf. And when the 15th pick came, I traded and got, or I didn't trade. I drafted, uh, uh Hawkinson from Iowa. Now, do I think the Redskins are going to do that? I don't think they're going to trade up because I wanted to get two weapons. I want to get two surefire weapons that can make the offense better right away. That was what my goal was. Give Josh Rosen some targets. And I will say, and again, it's Madden, so don't take it too serious. If Metcalf is half as good as he is in Madden, we'd be fools not to take him. He, his real speed, I'm not not game speed. His combine speed is his forty time is faster, faster than Deshaun Jackson. He is five inches taller than Deshaun Jackson. He's six three, six four, six three, like six three and a half is what his height is. He is bigger than Jordan Reed. Not weight-wise, Jordan Reed's about 20 pounds heavier, but he is broader and has a higher he has a higher vertical. He has like a 45-inch vertical. He has incredible athletic numbers. Okay. Now the knock against him is a couple things. One, he did get injured last year, so his numbers don't show really high production. Which fair fair point, but I don't think that's really that's that's I don't think that's enough to say that he shouldn't be we shouldn't draft a very talented guy. Two, a lot of people also say he doesn't run a full route tree. Well, that's because that's the way the offense was designed. If you watch a lot of old Miss's offense, even when he, wa- when he wasn't in, people who were in the spot he was in on the offense ran the similar routes. So it wasn't that he can't run a route tree. It's that he didn't have to. He had two different plays he ran, basically, two different routes. He ran a, a 10-yard comeback because he's so fast they gave him like a 10-yard cushion. Or he ran a 10, he, he'd streak deep. Or he'd do like a fake stop and then go. And that's pretty much like 90% of the offense they had him running. So that those are the knocks that I've heard against him. Honestly, I think that it, it, it even if that's all he can do, he's going to he's gonna have to demand double coverage because you have to have a safety over the top. If you don't do the so here's how they're gonna play him. They're gonna play him 10 yards deep. And you're going to have a guy that's going to go five yards, turn around, get the ball thrown to him. He's going to get five to ten yards every time doing that. Or you're going to play up on him, and he's too big, and he's going to burn by a guy, and then you have to have a safety over the top. That's how you have to defend the guy. And I'm, I'm telling you, there's not a safety in the league that's going to be able to jam that guy on the line. He's too big. He's too strong. His uh, his uh, 225 bench press rep was like 27. There are offensive linemen that don't get numbers that high. There are defensive linemen that don't get numbers that high. And there's definitely not corners that get numbers that high. So this, it, I'm not concerned too much about the other issues that he has when it comes to that. Not to mention his wingspan is like six foot eight. That is a very big wingspan. This is 
I, this is a proclamation. He's might he's he might be he might be um, uh, Megatron 2.0. Now Megatron obviously in college had a lot more catches, um, or he he actually didn't. He played in the uh, the style of offense that's really weird that he ended up at Georgia Tech where they played the triple option. So he didn't get the ball thrown to him as much in college, and he ended up being probably one of the best receivers ever. Jump ball receiver, can get it to him anytime, red zone, whatever the case is. What the heck? This person's driving like an idiot. So there, there's a lot of things that play out when it comes to D DK Metcalf. And then my other thing is, I think we need to go get a tight end to replace Jordan Reed. Even if we don't get rid of Jordan Reed, let's say we don't get rid of Jordan Reed, get a tight end to replace him next year then. Um, one of the tight ends, sorry if my phone's shaking, this is Pittsburgh, the roads aren't the best, okay? Um, even if we don't trade Jordan Reed, okay? We can cut him next year for like $3 million if he's still not healthy, okay? We can have a replacement for Jordan Reed next year, and this year, if Jordan Reed's healthy, he's playing, we're playing with Jordan Reed, TJ Hawkinson, or we can get that... Uh, the other, I don't remember the other one's name. It's like Noah Flint or something like that. Um, both, any of the ones from Iowa. They had two elite, two really good tight ends this year. TJ Hawkins is said to be the better one, the overall better player. And the other one's supposed to be a little bit more athletic, but not a good blocker. I would rather have TJ Hawkinson. He's the one that's not on the board for a reason. So that's who I would take, but that's just my opinion. Um, so though, either one, I, I'd say either one would be good. And... So now we're looking at an offense where now I, I traded for Josh Rosen. So let's say we don't get Josh Rosen. Let's say we get, and this is the quarterback that I think we should get, Will Greer in the third round. So now we have Case Keenum at quarterback. And if he sucks, we can put Will Greer in or Colt McCoy. I think we should get rid of Colt McCoy personally um, or move in the practice squad or whatever the case would be. I don't think Colt McCoy is the solution at quarterback. I don't think he'll ever be that solution. Um, not that I don't nothing against Colt McCoy the problem I have is just he's not he's just not a starter okay Case Keenum has shown um limited but he's shown success as a starter so I'd rather have Case Keenum and it, not to mention if you give Case Keenum weapons he's proven he can do some things on a football field okay Colt McCoy has not proven that he's beaten Dallas once in a game where they I don't think they were prepared to play against them okay um yeah, it's, it sucks that last year he has opportunity he got hurt, and he can have a chance to redeem himself this year and, and really get his opportunity. I just don't I don't want to risk a whole season trying to get Colt McCoy his opportunity. I think Case Keenan will be the best fit at quarterback and doing the things that I want to do in the draft. Now, second round, I think we second round if we get – we do what I said, trade up twice. Let's say we don't trade up twice. Let's say 15 pick comes along, we get DK Metcalf, okay? Second round, get an elite tight end. Get some kind of tight end that can be athletic enough to play, okay? If we're not going to get rid of Jordan Reed, then don't worry about getting a tight end. Get um, get a free safety so we can have a, a good back end of the secondary. And in third round, two third round picks, I get a quarterback and then I get some kind of offensive lineman that we can protect them with. The way the draft is now, you can get starters in the third and fourth round and sometimes late as the fifth if you draft properly. If you're looking for the right things, you can get starters late in the draft, Okay. So that's what I think the Redskins need to do. So if let's hypothetically say they do all the things I want. This is what our offense could be next year. DK Metcalf on one wing. Okay. Josh Dotson on the other. Paul Richardson at slot. Or Trey Quinn at slot if you don't like Paul Richardson. Okay. We can have we have a, a three tight end, five tight end options of Jordan Reed, Vernon Davis, TJ Hawkinson, or some other tight end we draft who's going to be uh, young and athletic and probably cheap, okay? And if we – and Jeremy Sprinkle and Matt Flanagan, those are the three, the five tight ends that would be technically on our roster come in training camp. I don't know if we're going to keep five tight ends on our roster for uh, the whole season. That wouldn't be smart, but that's the options we have. Flanagan would probably be the one to go. And I'd say – I still say look for a trader, or someone to trade and, and – someone to take Jordan Reed off her hands so we can actually go young on tight ends and be solidified in our tight end position for the next like five or six years but those are options at tight end and then running back we have Darius Geis and um, Jordan Reed for one or not Jordan Reed um, 
Adrian Peterson for one more year. And our offensive line, if it stays healthy, we're going to give ourselves a chance because our offense can actually be productive. We didn't have a chance last year because wide receivers in and out lineup, there's no timing, there's no consistency, there's no chemistry. Then our quarterback breaks his leg, and then Cole McCoy comes in. He didn't have timing. He didn't have chemistry. He actually played pretty good for not having any chemistry. Like they played like a, a they had to play like a three day game. If they played on Sunday, and then Cole McCoy came in and played on Thanksgiving. So that wasn't really much of an option for Cole McCoy to get acclimated to the offense. He played a little bit of the Tampa Bay game. No, it wasn't Tampa Bay. Was it? No, it was, it was Texans. I'm sorry. It was Texans game. Then he had immediately, like, not having any practice time, had to prepare and play against Dallas. That's exactly what happened with Cole McCoy. Then the next week, when he finally got a little bit of time, he ended up breaking his leg in, like, the first quarter or second quarter. And Mark Sanchez freaking had to come into the game. So... Uh, there's just a lot of things that happen with the Redskins. If we can, the biggest issue with the Redskins, and this is our biggest downfall, is the fact that we can't stay healthy. Now, whether that's the training staff, I would fire the entire training staff if I was the owner. I wouldn't even do it if I was a coach. I would, if I was the owner, I would surpass the coach. I would bring him in my office and say, "Listen, there's something going on here. When we have this many of our players, this much of the guys I spend money on getting injured." You need to do something with your with your uh, training staff, or I'm going to do something with your training staff. And when I say I'm going to do something with the training staff, I'm saying uh, heads are rolling. Guys are not going to be on this coaching on on your staff very long, and that'll be my decision, not yours. So you can't have that many injuries, and there ha- there's not something wrong with the training staff, or something wrong with the type of training that they're su- subjecting the players to. There's not. There, it's impossible. To have that many injuries consistently. It's two years in a row now. We've had that many injuries on the offensive line. And it, uh, it, it, in last year, not this last season, but the year before, the year before that, we actually had the defense really injured. And then now last year, we had all, a lot of our receivers were injured. Jamison Crowder was out for a significant portion of the game. We had Jordan Reed out a significant portion of, the, of, of Crowder out a significant portion of the season. I'm sorry. Jordan Reed out, significant portion of the season. Okay. Um, who else? Uh, Dotson. Dotson, for the most part, played most games. Um, Trey Quinn was out, significant portion of the season. Um, Paul Richardson, the guy we put a whole bunch of fucking money into in the offseason, was out a significant portion of the season. So there's something going on with the training, and that would be something I would address as the owner. And I wouldn't give it, I, I would tell the coach he's got like, he's got to fix it quick, fast, in a hurry. This is also Jay Gruden's last year. And he's not looking to rebuild. He's looking to reload and go for it and, and make some moves, make some waves into the playoffs. I personally think Jay Gruden is the best coach we've had since since uh, Joe Gibbs. That is my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with me. But whenever you have a coach that is losing half his offensive line, he's losing quarterbacks, he's losing weapons, and you're still hovering around 500, you're competing with third string guys at the professional level of football. That's a big deal to me. That matters to me and that resonates with me more than anything. 